So Aaron, you went to the the Bitcoin meetup in in Mexico City the other day or yesterday? Yeah, yeah. I I, I do my best to to try and keep social in the Bitcoin space because there's there's a lot going on and you you get caught up in your own world and it's good to talk to other people about it that that also fall in the same thing. And, and it was cool because a couple of people recognized uh, recognized me from when we went to the the Latin American Bitcoin conference. Um, and, and, you know, I didn't get to talk to, so it was kind of a similar experience to the in Acapulco come, you know, round two, coming back and then meeting people that you saw last time, but didn't get a chance to talk to. Um, yep. so that, that was cool. And then, uh, you know, the familiar faces with Bitso and a couple of new exchanges that have, that have popped up here in Mexico. Great. Turnout was nice. There was, um, I say it was, it was maybe, um, you know, 80 to hundred people. Um, so, I mean, it wasn't a full house, but still a good crowd. And it seemed like a very fresh crowd because mm-hmm. a lot of, a lot of questions that, uh, you know, that we've pretty, we could pretty explain and we're not experts, uh, you know, maybe even six months or, or a year ago. So it's, it was cool to see, mm-hmm. you know, fresh blood in the, in the mm-hmm. zone. Great. Um, uh, what I noticed was there was a couple themes, um, and of course the the first one is uh, the rise of Ethereum, and then uh, and then what it, what Ethereum's doing with uh, with Slocket and now with the DAO. That mm-hmm. I think I mean even even for people that are following it, I mean the crowd sale still open for the DAO, so it's still very very new, very fresh. And uh, as much as I thought I knew what I what I was talking I about, think it, I think it ends in like the 29th, doesn't it? Uh, or, or 28th it's yeah, i think okay. it could be very very soon it's, might might already be gone by the time this episode gets up <laughs> yeah it, it might be today so yep. that's yesterday or the day before anyway um <laughs> i mean you can still buy them it just uh it just means that you know you're not going to get the 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 pre-sale price which yep. um anyway so cool so t- tell us about the relationship or or how it works with B- btc Ether, Slocket, and DAO. What's the story? Okay, yeah, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a bit to uh, to process. So if I get off track, um, mm-hmm. yeah, guide me back. But the f- the first thing is uh, there's a big rivalry between Bitcoin and Ether, which uh, I mean it kind of makes sense because B- uh, Bitcoin's been the the big boy that's always been uh, there since the beginning, and now Ether's you know left the blocks. And you know, jump to a, a billion dollars, uh, you know, market cap. Uh, and then once that happened, now you know, now Slocket has come out, and then now Dow. Um, so it's been it's been a big shakeup inside the you know the altcoin range. Uh, mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it's not. I, I mean, you can look at it like it's just another altcoin, but that's that's not the the ecosystem. So uh, I mean, you can, you can go read the, the white papers to get an idea of of, of what the differences are, but um, I mean, even reading them, it didn't uh, it didn't crystallize for me until yesterday. Hearing it from uh, one of the dudes that actually work in in Slocket, he explained it Great. much easier and, and clearer, which I'm going to try and do now. Um, okay. First things first. Okay, let's talk about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is essentially uh, decentralized system with uh, many nodes all around the world that are all processed in the same algorithm. Uh, this allows within the ecosystem to make transactions between uh, A and B. So uh, irrespective of how much value that is, it's just all transactions bungled together inside one block, which is one uh, one megabyte, and you know within a 10-minute period. So it's... it's now looking at it, it's a little bit primitive because it's just uh, raw, um, blind hash power just pounding this algorithm out. Right. You it, that- it can't really do anything but but send value. That's that's all it does. So it's it's this kind of dumb system, just just very simple, um, just one function basically. Yes. Well, I, I say yeah, but I mean I've never heard anyone call it a, a simple 
system. But yeah, so basically, <laughs> well, not simple in the mechanics, but <laughs> but simple in in what what it actually does in the in the end. Like in terms of uh, user functionality, there's basically only one function or two functions: send, receive, bitcoins. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. I mean, there's been talk of other things you could put on top, um, and then you, know, you have side change yep, and things. Yep. But there's but essentially, Bitcoin. And, yeah, yeah. Um, but essentially, yeah, that's what Bitcoin is: transactions from A to B. Um, where this changes, or where this becomes a little bit different, is where where you start thinking of how Ethereum processes uh, transactions, and and even to say that now seems wrong because what Ethereum is, Ethereum is like um, it's it processes transactions as well but the transactions isn't uh, A to B it's like the transaction is an actual coded line of it's a line of code and the Ethereum machine uh, or algorithm actually goes through and processes each line of code so where the, the line of code might say transaction from A to B it's going to do very similar thing to what uh, Bitcoin does, but the actual way it does it is is much different because then you can put other lines of code, other completely different um, executable, uh, I guess, um, requests into this uh, into this mm-hmm. machine, and it's going to go through and process line by line, uh, irrespective of what the code is. Um, this is why they they call it like the the first um, world computer because it literally yep. is a decentralized uh, code processing machine. So here we get into what Slocket and the DAO is. Uh, the, Slocket is like um, a program, a, a computer program that is on top of the Ethereum machine, and DAO is an application on. The Ethereum computer as well. Um, okay, so, that- so Slocket is, is kind of like an operating system running on the computer that that is e- Ether, and and um, DAO is is the app that's running on this operating system. That that's one that way. Of, right? that, that's one way of looking at it. But okay. um, but when you say operating system, it's going to allow uh, programs or apps to run inside that. But there mm-hmm. there's potential to be an infinite amount of in this case, uh, operating systems or, uh, you know, or like parent programs. Um, okay. So that that's where it makes it uh, really cool because it's going to make it a lot, um, a lot easier to do things like smart contracts. It's actually, it's, mm-hmm. it's actually built. So, you know, as long as you can program, you can make your smart contract, just program it out and, and drop the text into the computer and it's going to process your, your contract or your, your code. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, um, I, I, I don't know what else to add to that. I mean, it's, I think I went over it very quickly. <laughs> yep, yep. Okay, so what, what, what kind of things uh, will we expect to see in, in the next few years? What kind of thing is, is the DAO going to be able to do? Okay, well, what they're looking at now is there, there seems to, there's a way that you put a proposal forward to something, an, an application you want to do with the DAO. And the DAO itself is, is going to be, it's, uh, it's like an incubator for these projects so at the moment, I think I heard there was about a hundred proposals, and everyone that's that's involved or every single DAO uh, will have will be able to vote, uh, yay or nay, on these projects. And as long as a project can hold twenty percent of the complete DAO um, voice, then then that way the project's going to go ahead and then start uh, actually start producing applications of the of the DAO. So an application that, I mean, an, e- an easy common one, and I think most people in the space, we talk about smart contracts, would be um, a, a three-party involved, uh, three parties involved um, change of ownership and uh, where's a payment involved. So for example, um, a traditional... An easy example, going to a car dealership and buying uh, a motor car. Mm-hmm. In this case, uh, you want to buy with uh, with credit or get finance. So 
you go to the dealership, they have their, their finance involved, the ownership of the car stays, it's yours, but it's not yours until you finish paying for it, and then there's all the like, legal paperwork. All that can get thrown away, because with the new system, the actual payment on the uh, or in the DAO or in the on the Ethereum or in the whichever crypto coins or digital contract, smart contract, will actually have the ownership inside the uh, the process of paying. So once the payment is mm-hmm. completed, then the ownership uh, digitally will become yours, and that's the rules of the contract. There's there's no there's no need for disputes or or anything outside what the contract is. So as long as you're making your payments uh, and that's going through the system, once you finish paying, it's like they, the contract knows whether you've paid or not. It's like it's it's all bunched together and the ownership will get mm. transferred to you once the final payment's paid for. So think, yep. things so like even, that. Okay. So that, I mean, that... Even as a possible, uh, you, you could have something similar with the house you could you could organize a, a direct transaction with somebody to buy a house and pay them a thousand dollars every month, and a, and then at the end of the contract, it's your house. Yep, and there's no need for real estate agents. There's no need for um, I know the solicitors to sign paperwork oh, yes. yeah. across. Any any lawyer doesn't need to be involved because as long as you agree to the contract in the first place, then it's going to be X amount of money over X amount of time. And as long as everything falls inside the perimeters uh, of the contract, then uh, the ownership automatically is transferred once once a contract's complete. It's literally like it's programmable code. There's no way to, to unprogram it or change what the, what the contract is. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, uh, I think I foresee it causing a lot of problems within legal systems, but at least theoretically, the, the mechanism would be there for people to avoid um, yeah, lawyers and, and transfer fees and registration and all that kind of stuff, um, conveyancing. Yeah, well, we've, we've mentioned these kind of examples before when we were speaking with, uh, with Juan, Juan Galt um, from Disrupt Tech um, in a previous episode, episode 50. Yep, episode 15, yeah. The Paradise Paradox.com slash 15, yeah. Excellent. Uh, yep. So, I mean, there's more examples there, but I think at that time it was like, yeah, this is all possible, but when or how it's like we'd program, but now there is a there is a, a group that's actually going to, that's doing it. So now it's going to be, yep. um, well, I mean, I don't know how far away, but it seems like it's it could happen, like it's happening. You can actually do it. I think last time we were talking about it, it was like this is the thing in the future. Now it's like yep. uh, in a couple of days when this crowdfunding uh, finishes, then literally the DAO is going to let you do it now. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, yep. that, that was only like six months ago for something that was yeah. future to – you want to sell me your house? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess those are those are the important points. Did Did you have anything else to say about that? Um, no, I, I think that that's really basic on on how uh, how Ethereum compares to to Bitcoin. Um, the only other thing is that the whole rivalry thing. Like it, it was pretty clear yesterday that the Ethereum guys understand that without Bitcoin, they wouldn't be part of it. Like they wouldn't be able to do what they've done without Bitcoin. So yep. I think a lot of the guys that think, you know, uh, you know, like real Bitcoin heads, then, uh, you know, they, they need to loosen up a little bit. Like, <laughs> okay. Like, you mean like Bitcoin maximalists? Yeah. I think we're all on the same team. Like, like we're all going for the same thing. So, um, yeah, yeah. It, it's just about, you know, not, not getting caught up because, you know, you, you can get caught up with your favorite sports team, but you just got to enjoy the sport. <laughs> You know, forget, yeah, forget what yeah, color, absolutely. a logo. Cool. <laughs> cool. Okay, great. Thanks for that, Aaron. No worries. Thanks for listening. Remember to jump on over to theparadiseparadox.com slash 108, theparadiseparadox.com slash 108, so you can get the show notes for this episode and 
check out other interesting links, such as our interview with Juan Galt, theparadiseparadox.com slash 50, so you can listen to that episode and hear about the potentials for the Ethereum platform and how it might be changing the future and interface with other technologies, predictions of what's going to happen in proximate years. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Be excellent to each other.